All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I am going to uh, show you how to make a scatter plot for uh, wavelength and frequency for the speed of sound lab. So this is some data that I got from doing the lab myself. So these are the frequencies I use. I use 200 through 900 hertz, and I just went up by 100 hertz every time. I measured the tube length from that, and then I multiplied that by 4 to give me the wavelength because only a quarter of a wave fits in the tube as long as you find the first harmonic. So this is my data. Now the first thing you need to do is type this data into Excel. So uh, just you know, open your OneNote up, open up Excel, put them side by side, and then type your data in. Make sure that you don't have units with your numbers. So in these cells, the only thing I have is just the number itself. I put the unit up here at the top of the column, so this tells me that everything below here is in hertz. This tells me that everything below here is in meters, and everything below there is in meters as well. Okay, I'm just going to click out to the side here, and I'm going to click Insert. And I'm going to come over here to Charts. And the kind of chart that I want is a scatter plot. So I click that little scatter plot button, and I don't want to connect the dots. So I'm not using any of these that would connect my data points. I'm just going to choose this one that has all the data points separate. Now when I click on that, I get this box for my graph, but there's nothing in my graph because I haven't selected any data. So once I have the box selected, I'm going to right click. And when I right click, I come down here to select data, click on that, and I want to add a data series. So right here I've got the add button, I'm going to add a data series, and it tells me what's the series name, series x values, series y values. I don't really care about the name, I'm only going to have one data series in here. Uh, the x values for this graph are going to be my frequency, so I select series x values, I come over here to frequency, and I just highlight the numbers. Okay, I just highlight the numbers. Then I come down here to the y values, I'm going to click on this, and then I'm going to delete what's already there. So I don't need that little equals one whatever thing that was in there. I don't want that. Delete that out. And then I'm going to select my wavelength. So this will give me a wavelength versus frequency graph. Wavelength goes in the Y. Frequency goes in the X. I click OK. I'll click OK again. And there's my graph. Okay, there's my graph. And your data should have this general shape to it. It should have that general shape. If your data looks funky or weird and doesn't look like that, um, it might be that you need to delete a couple of data points because maybe you got some bad data. If it's just totally way off, you might need to just start over and try again. Okay, so from here I've got my I've got my graph, but it says chart title at the top. I'm going to go ahead and uh, well I'll leave that for now. I've got chart title at the top. I don't have anything on the sides. I don't have anything on my axes. So I need to label these axes, and I also need to put in the units on the side. The way I'm going to do that is up here at the top I have Chart Tools, and then under the Design tab, to the left I have Quick Layout. I'm going to select Quick Layout. This first one in the upper left hand corner will work for me. This gives me Chart Title, Axis Title, Axis Title, and then the Series Name over here. Again, I've only got one data series, so I really don't care about that series name, so I'm just going to delete that out. Now, for the Chart Title, I'm going to call this uh, this was wavelength versus frequency. That was the type of graph that I had. Down here on the x-axis, I'm going to change this axis title. This was my frequency. My frequency was in hertz, so hz to abbreviate that. Over here, this was my wavelength. So this is wavelength in meters. So I'll change that. And that's the basics of my graph there. So my graph is complete for the most part. I have a scatter plot. I have frequency down here at the bottom, wavelength over here, and I can see that kind of nice trend that's going on there. I want you guys to go one step further, and what I want you to do is add a trend line. So a trend line is where we take a line or, or, the, or a line that would be formed from an equation, and we choose the one that's going to fit the data the best to give us whatever that trend is that's occurring there. This is not a linear trend. I can just see this by kind of looking at it, but it kind of comes down and then it kind of levels off and I don't have a constant slope all the way through there, so that's not a linear graph. I'm going to click on my data to select it. Once all my data points have been selected, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to do add trend line. And you can see it starts off, it starts off by giving, there we go, let me get me out of the way. It starts off by recommending a linear fit. 
Okay, it always just defaults to linear fit. And if I look at this, that doesn't really look very good. I've got data points way up here, way down there. I could go ahead and put the equation on there and take a look. As a matter of fact, I think I'll do that. So I'm going to display the, so I scroll down to the bottom over here in this, in this uh, window to the right. I'm going to display the equation, and I'm also going to display the R squared value. Here's the equation in the R squared value. Now, it gives me the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. m is this negative 0 0.0017, b is this 1.63, and it gives me an R squared value. An R squared value of 1 is a perfect fit. So if the R squared is 1, your line goes through every data point. Really, for an experiment, you should never have an R squared of 1. Um, there should be some experimental error in there somewhere, so that really shouldn't happen. But 0.836 is pretty low. Uh, we really want that to be like 0.95 or higher. That'd be a good fit. So I'm going to delete this because this, this line is not the one that I want. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to click on my data point, right click, add trend line. And I'm going to come down here to power. Um, come down here to power. I'm going to display the equation on the chart, and I'm going to display the R-squared value. Immediately, you can already see I've got a different equation. It's not the equation of a line. Let me make that a little bigger for you. It's not the equation of a line. Instead, I have y equals 945 point whatever times x raised to the negative 1.119. But look at that R-squared value, 0.9956. So it's not one, it's not a perfect fit, it doesn't touch every data point, but it's a heck of a lot better fit than I had with the linear one. Okay, that's really all I want you to do with your graph for today. So once you've made that graph, all you have to do is select it, right click, copy. Okay, once you have that copied, then you would go to your OneNote and just paste it into your OneNote in that lab. Okay, uh, hopefully you don't have any trouble with that. If you do, go ahead and shoot me an email and I'll uh, get back to you and try to help. Thanks.